Howdy partners, I'm Rick Koppel and on this Friday, November 8th, 2019, I want to welcome you to my first official video discussing all things Parkinson's on this channel. So your doctor suspects that you may have Parkinson's or you may have been newly diagnosed but have no idea or very sketchy idea what Parkinson's disease is, does to you and how to deal with it. Here, my first special video on this channel should be about parking what Parkinson's is and so here it is all you wanted to know about Parkinson's were afraid to ask on the three clips of potential intro music I put up earlier this week for my followers to vote on second entry won unanimously I've shortened it a bit more but here it is and it's all its glory What do you think of that? Did you like it? You can put your thoughts in the comments below. I appreciate the feedback. Uh, also, I put uh, up some links in the description below that show that I'm not just making all this stuff up that I'm using here in this video. There are also some good links to go further in depth about this topic that I'm able to hear. So, first thing we should start out with is, is a definition on Parkinson's. What Parkinson's is generally Parkinson's is generally described as a movement disorder caused by the loss of dopamine producing and storing neurons in the area of the brain that controls movement the basal ganglia and substantia nigra. Now based on data from 2010 Parkinson's disease is considered the 14th leading cause of death in the United States. Around 60,000 people are diagnosed with Parkinson's every year. That's quite a bit of people. Aside from identifying genetic risk for PD and exposure to pesticides and potential causes, most cases, doctors are not able to figure out the cause and so label it as idiopathic Parkinson's disease. In other words, they have no idea what causes most cases of Parkinson's. While there has been some progress to identifying the causal factors of Parkinson's, there is still a long ways to go before they discover why the incident of PD has increased over the last couple of decades, as well as why people get it in the first place. Once that has been established, it is hoped that there will eventually be a cure. More on that in a future video. Now, each person who has PD experiences a different mix of symptoms. Symptoms range very widely depending on what part of the muscle group or body that, that the Parkinson's affects. Um, most people associate tremors with Parkinson's disease. However, some Parkinson's disease patients never get tremors. Other common motor symptoms one may get is slowness of movement, otherwise known as bradykinesia, stiffness of the limbs, otherwise known as dystonia, shuffling of feet, difficulty walking, freezing of feet, in other words one feels like their foot or feet are stuck to the ground. Common non-motor symptoms can include depression, difficulty sleeping, drooling, swallowing issues, and constipation. Many of these symptoms may have a motor component to them but are also considered to be non-motor oriented. But since there's no cure for Parkinson's yet, it's a progressive chronic disease. Once you get it, you just progress down that road until you leave this planet. Since there's no cure, most treatments focus on helping to control the symptoms of the disease. The most common treatment, and the only full-time treatment op option for most people, is levodopa. Levodopa, once it gets in the body, can be transformed into dopamine. 
It's necessary to do this so just injecting dopamine straight into the body. You have to do use levodopa because levodopa can get past the blood brain barrier, but dopamine cannot. So for it to get to the brain, it has to go in as levodopa. Then once in the brain, it's converted to dopamine, and it's in there, and then the body can use it. Now, the in order for more of the levodopa to get through the blood brain barrier before converting, because once it converts, it can't get into the brain anymore and to help offset the side effects of upset stomach the levodopa is known to cause in many people it is often paired with carbidopa it's a drug that helps to offset those things it can also be paired with other medications to offset or deal with other side effects of the drug or other symptoms that the person may be having another treatment option is what are called dopamine agonists these are chemicals that mimic dopamine. In other words, your body thinks of dopamine when they plug them in there. They are able to fit in dopamine receptors. They are more commonly used in the early stages of Parkinson's since they don't appear to be as effective the further down the progression road one goes. One of the downsides is that more people have a greater side effect in these medications such as hallucination, depression, sleepiness, among others. So, yeah, a lot of people have a lot more problems with these. Some people also take selegiline, or its more recent cousin, Verazgaline, which is brand name for Azelect. There are these, these are MAO inhibitors. MAO, MAO. They help by inhibiting the effectiveness of MyOB, which is an enzyme responsible for breaking down and getting rid of dopamine in the brain. In effect, taking this medication plugs up the drain so the dopamine in one's brain stains around long before going to that big garbage dump in the sky. Amantity is another well known PD drug. It can help the symptoms, but is currently taken more to help with the onset of dyskinesia which are involuntary movements that result not from the disease directly but as a result of taking levodopa yeah, for an extended length of time usually and in greater greater quantities because the further you go down the Parkinson's road the more levodopa you have to take to get the same effect or sometimes the losing battle eventually eventually the person loses out but amantadine it's primarily to help us onto dyskinesia once it starts to happen. Uh, now, dyskinesia is caused by not directly from the disease, but from the taking of levodopa. And like the dopamine agonist, it can have some serious side effects, including increased constipation. I can vouch for that one. Hallucinations, other side effects similar to dopamine agonist. So there's a lot of people that can't take that one because they react to, to the medication badly. There are other drugs used to treat symptoms like depression. There are certain drugs for depression that are used. It would make this list too long to put on if we put all the drugs that, that are used for Parkinson's and the symptoms. For example, several of the drugs one might use for depression react negatively with levodopa. So that only leaves basically, that's the guy in the webinar seminar that we went to uh, a while back. There's only one drug left for depression that can be used. And the longer, even common over the counter drugs like antihistamines, can be off limits for many Parkinson's patients. The longer one's list of drugs becomes, the more other drugs become off limits. And or the patient may need to put up with whatever side effects the contraindications may cause. Last common treatment to discuss is the drug, but a surgical procedure. Yep, I'm talking about deep brain stimulation, DBS. A lead is placed in each hemisphere of the brain. That's called bilateral DBS. 
into one of two spots in the brain. Then once it's all hooked up to a power plant, sounds like a power surge is coming. Really, it's a fancy name for a battery. And it is turned on. Electrical impulse is sent from the end of the brain. Now, no one knows exactly why this works, but the pulse tends to block the static being generated by misfiring neurons due to lack of dopamine in the system. I've had this procedure done me, and of course I'll be discussing that more in a future video. That's my summary of what Parkinson's disease is. I know when I was told that I had likely had Parkinson's disease by my doctor, I didn't have a good grasp of what it was beyond having tremors, maybe. So I immediately began to do some research on it. Truth be told, with this video, I mean the big pile of information is out there. That said, I hope and pray that this will be a good introduction to the topic for those who are looking for it. Plus, I felt I couldn't have a channel on the topic without having this video to start off with. Well, here I am, we'll be able to delve more into specific topics I mentioned in this video and many that are not. Thanks for watching. If you want to follow me as I explore the various aspects of this disease, both on research and how we deal with it in life, please click on the subscribe button down below the notification bell to get an email whenever I post a video. Until next Friday, don't forget, be you, because no one can do you like you can. Bye.